Welcome to the Envelopes Emmy Contender Series. I'm Yvonne Villarreal. Each episode will talk with actors behind some of your favorite TV performances this season. On today's episode, we're talking to Evan Peters, who plays Kai Anderson in TV's American Horror Story, Cult. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Do you feel less nervous now? No. <laughs> Still really nervous. Evan didn't know this was live, so let's, mm -mm. let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Yay! Everyone, thank you. Thank you. Well, so this season of American Horror Story stood out because it was it's one of the first scripted series to sort of explore, examine um, the election. Right. What do you remember about what Ryan talked about, what he wanted to achieve with this season? Um, when he approached you. Well, I th he said you're a, um, a cult leader and uh, sort of like a Manson-esque cult leader. And then... Um, and also you're sort of, you know, you're in your basement looking at 4chan and and sort of in that alt-right world. Mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of dove into that world a little bit and then uh, found Pepe the Frog and everything that was going on with the Trump election. And uh, it was fascinating and found the song Chatelet, that mm. song that was in the, um, the show a lot. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. What was, was what was that like sort of preparing? I would imagine... I mean, just rewatching some of the, like, even the first episode, hearing the playback of some of the news reports, it sort of takes you back to that time. And it does make yeah. your stomach, like, a little, there's a pit in there sometimes. Yeah, no, it was like, yeah, we had the pizza, and then it was, I was just frozen and, and shocked. And I'd just gotten engaged that night as well, so it oh, was wow. kind of a real uh, kick in the gut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this would you say it's safe to say that it's it was the most difficult and demanding season for you? Yes, it definitely was. It was exhausting. It was like it was sixteen hour days and the content was insane mm -hmm. and uh yeah, it was really it was definitely the most difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean there's a lot of like awkward, horrific scenes. I mean, you're urinating yeah. into condoms. You're pleasuring yourself. Yeah. In that wasn't real urine, by the way. That was. <laughs> what was it? You, it's really, by the way, you cannot fill up a condom with urine. It won't work. So we Did had you to try. Use, yeah. <laughs> but we had to, we just had to use um, a water balloon. Okay. Uh, clear water balloon. So a little movie magic there for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you also pleasure yourself in front of Billy Eichner's character. Um, yeah. So, what is that process like? Like in your trailer just before you're about to go shoot scenes like that? Like, how do you yeah. get in that space? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of got to imagine that you're at home in your shower <laughs> and Billy Eichner isn't there. <laughs> Great looking guy, but I mean, I wasn't quite ready for that. Did he make any jabs at you? What do you mean? Like in between takes, like giving oh, you a hard time? No, they were, everybody was very supportive. Okay. <laughs> applause Simulating. between takes. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Go for it, man. <laughs> Harder. Yeah, sorry. Um, you and Sarah are the two cast members that have been with us since the beginning, right? Yeah. Talk about what it's like working with her and in this season in particular, sort of going head to head. She's great. She, I mean, she's hilarious. Uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if people know that a lot about her, but she's so funny. Um, and a fantastic actress, so it's, it's I love doing scenes with her because it's very comfortable, and then I think we're both, uh, you know, we get really into our characters and, and, and we just want it to be great, so I think we we, uh, we just try really hard to work off of each other, but then we also feel comfortable doing crazy stuff to each other, you know, like uh, being mean or pointing a gun at her or any of that <laughs> crazy stuff, so it's just sort of, it's easy with her, you know. Mm -hmm. Did Had she make made you watch Real Housewives yet? No. Uh, no, thank God. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. Yeah. Um, what would you say it's like being on that set, particularly this season? I mean, I was telling my coworkers earlier, it was really hard to watch this season because I would have the clown nightmares. I didn't know about the whole phobia and that sort of seeped into my I dreams. Didn't either, yeah. I never knew there was a whole phobia. Me neither. No. Um, but like, what is a typical day like? Are there, are the masks just like 
The masks <laughs> everywhere. You can't see in the masks or really move uh -huh. or hear anything, and they can't really hear you. So it's uh, it's not a very practical uh -huh. killing mask. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was it was it was. I don't, it's fun. It's fun to be on that set because I get you know it's, it was year seven, so everybody kind of knows each other, and then there's new people there as well. So it's fun. Keeps it fresh. Uh, but yeah, it's not, the only thing that's really scary is the amount of hours that we work on that show and uh, sort of the amount of content that's slammed into, mm -hmm. into one day. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, it's, it's pretty fun. How about the, the first episode? I mean, you blend up Cheetos, smother <laughs> it on your face. Right, the Cheeto roll, yeah. Cheeto. Yeah, that was weird. I, I never, I didn't quite understand that, but I think that was kind of the point is that Kai's sort of, losing his mind that was the beginning of everything going crazy um and idolizing trump so uh yeah it was just nuts was that actual cheetos it was partly cheetos if you blend up cheetos in a blender with a little bit of water it doesn't quite come out that color <laughs> so it's more of like a creamy orange how do you take that off i mean we know how it is lunch with that you had to eat lunch, I had to eat with, lunch with that it was so gross um, but yeah, they, uh, it just comes off with water. It does? But they didn't want to, because we had to break for lunch, and then uh, they would have had to take it off and put it all back on the same way. And I said, to hell with it. I'll just eat my chicken with Cheetos on my face. It'll be Do fine. people take photos of that? Uh, Are you on no. Facebook? No. <laughs> Not really. I would have. I took a selfie, though. You did? Yeah, for dexterity. <laughs> well, we're going to take some fan questions, if oh, you don't mind. Okay. And we had a lot. You oh, have really? a, a very... Um, Dedicated admirer named Drew. Cool. Sending in some questions. Right, um, Drew. What is your favorite season of American Horror Story that you filmed? That's a hard question because I like them all for different reasons. Mm -hmm. But um, probably the first one was just because it was fresh out of the gate and we mm -hmm. didn't know what we were doing and it was all new and, and exciting. And was, I got to work with Jessica Lang for the first time and Thaisa was great. And, Dylan was great. Everybody was great, and it was just kind of this weird thing that we didn't know what it was. So it was Did exciting. it almost feel full circle, like playing Kai yeah. versus Tate? Like it, it did. did. Like they could almost be the same person. Like yeah. Tate growing up. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was the villain. You know, mm -hmm. it was this weird villain. Uh, yeah, yeah, it definitely did. It came full circle. Is it surprising to you that you have sort of perfected the? art of playing creepy or <laughs> troubled? Yeah, uh, they're, um, I think it's really, it's not so much me, I think it's just the way they write it. Mm -hmm. Because they write, that's what I was gonna say before, is that the, they, they have these villains, but they're just, they're these guys who are, are, you know, good guys who just have horrible stuff happen to them. And then they also have a little chip missing, mm -hmm. so then it, then it just sends them over to this next evil mm -hmm. lair, and then, uh, so I, I really think it's the writing that, that enables me to do that. I think if it was any other kind of writing, it would just be a villain. Mm -hmm. You know, it wouldn't have that, that third dimension. Do you find that people that don't know you sort of assume that you're eerily similar to those <laughs> kinds of characters? Yeah, I think they're always <laughs> shocked that, I'm, that I'll take a picture or, or <laughs> say hi to them or something. They think I'm going to spit in their face. Right, and, exactly. And, yeah. Uh, Jasmine from Twitter asks, if you could choose the theme for a future season of American Horror Story, what would you choose? I always say space. I've been space? saying space for seven years. <laughs> I think space is terrifying, and then there can also be, like, legit aliens, and you can also <laughs> keep it contained so we can keep the budget down. Right. And uh, I think it would be really fun. Space. I like that. Space. Victoria from Twitter asks, how did you feel about politics in American Horror Story cults? I, I thought this season was very, it was very current, you know, mm -hmm. with what was going on in Charlottesville and the election and the fear that was all over the country. And uh, I think it, it was it was very current and I was very proud of that. And it was cool to be a part of that because it was sort of saying something about our culture and what mm -hmm. was going on. And then obviously at the end, Sarah takes over yeah. and, and uh, gets rid of this chauvinist crazy person. Right. So it's, uh, it's, it's a great thing. How did you feel about the ending? I liked the ending a lot. I was, I was like, yes, okay, good. <laughs> Down with Kai. So it was, uh, it was good. Well, what was it like to shoot that? Hard. Uh, that was a, that that whole scene took took all night. Uh, it was just, yeah, the whole show was pretty exhausting, and that was the end of the 
end of the line, so it was uh, it was exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how about what's it like having Ryan direct? Like, what kind of notes does Ryan give as a director? <laughs> Is he just kind of like faster, slower? Or does he give you like he does? Real so direction? he will say faster. He'll say, "Let's do it like ten percent quicker," mm -hmm. and then. Um, what I love about working with Ryan is that he'll do different options. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's it, sometimes as an actor you can get caught trying to redo the last take better, mm -hmm. but you know you you did it already, so mm -hmm. try a different choice. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you're maybe you're not so excited mm -hmm. about asking her out on a date, which isn't how it was scripted, but let's try it out. Maybe it'll work in the editing room. So he likes a lot of options, which is uh, inspiring, and you can get really creative with your choices. So. Mm -hmm. Well, part of the reason this season was so demanding is you play, at some points in the season, several characters. Uh, we saw you inhabit Andy Warhol, Charles yeah. Manson. Yeah. Um, what was that like, and did you find one to be more daunting than the other? Well, they were all pretty daunting. Um, I remember Ryan came into my trailer and, and said, I want you to look at some Andy Warhol documentaries because you're going to be playing Andy Warhol in, like, two weeks. Oh. I was like, oh. <laughs> Okay, great, perfect, I'll get right on that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just scrambling and looking at videos and trying to listen to his voice and him and Edie, and it was just, that one was, because that was the first one, so that one was really daunting. Mm -hmm. um, but it was also really fun, and I learned a lot about Andy Warhol, so it was, uh, it was very cool. Um, but all of them were pretty exhausting. But the, 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 the uh, cult leaders, particularly Jim Jones, mm -hmm. was uh, the saddest. To, to, to work with and listen to. I kept listening to this video of, of him doing the mass suicide tape because that's what we were going to shoot. And it's, it's horrific, mm -hmm. you know, how he's sort of manipulating all these people and you hear people crying out and trying to, you know, argue against him and then other people are stomping them down. And it's, it's just, it's tragic. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it, was, it was intense, but uh, I definitely learned a lot. What was your takeaway in doing all these, in all this research, like, the type of charisma that these people had that they could, you know, lure people into believing what they believed and also the kinds of people that sort of are um, susceptible to sort of Yeah, I think you, you really want, I mean, people just want to be loved and included and, you know, some people just don't want to, including myself sometimes, I just don't want to think about anything. Mm -hmm. I just want to believe, I want to follow somebody, I want them to show me the way because it's just easier. So, uh, you know, that's the kind of people that get involved in this. And it's not, you know, it's, it's educated people. It's people who go to college. It's people who uh, um, are very smart, but uh, they just want to be included in something. And it's usually under the disguise of something that's, you know, very noble and uh, is helping humanity. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is that they just totally brainwash these people and sleep deprive them and, you know, food deprive them. and. Uh, it's really, really sad, and, and you know they're willing to stay in it because they think they're doing a good cause. Um, so it's uh, it's sad, you know, and it's happening right now as well, um, all over. Uh, you just don't quite hear about it as much, and um, thankfully there aren't as many mass suicides. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah. Well, this show is known for sort of embracing the extreme. It pushes against a lot of boundaries. How is that for you as an actor? Like, is it hard to get comfortable with that? Or is it like the dream? Um, I think it's both. I think it, it is, you know, Ryan is pushing a lot of envelopes continually. And uh, it's, it's awesome to be a part of that. Like even Pose coming up is, mm -hmm. is such a cool show to be a part of and an inspiring show to be a part of. And I'm, I'm really loving it. So, uh, so that's really cool. And, and it, it, it is hard though, you know, it's not always, the easiest thing, but that's 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 why it is pushing the envelope, you know. Well, talk a little bit about what it's like being in this sort of Ryan Murphy troupe of actors, um, and sort of jumping off of that. I wanted you to talk a little bit more about Pose and what you can what we can expect from your character. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, like I said, Ryan has given me opportunity after opportunity. I don't know why he, you know. It's really incredible that he does that, and uh, it's very humbling and, and very exciting. And uh, and I just always want to do a great job for him. You know, I just I love the, what he does. I love the writing. I love his directing. Um, so it's awesome to be a part of that group. And then uh, and then to carry. You know, it's so cool because he uh, 
he called me um, during Horror Story and he was like, what actor do you think would be, you know, good for like, you know, 30s, you know, two kids, and a wife, and then, um, you know, he kind of gets in this sort of Trump world and whatnot. And he said, like, just think about it. Think of any a actors that you know, any friends or something that you would like. And I was like, and I got off the phone, and I was like, well, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> like, I would like to do that. Like, I don't know. Like, and uh, I didn't say that, of course. I listed off a bunch of people. I was like, <laughs> Well, Finn Whitrock, you know, he's kind of 30s and whatnot, and and, uh, and then I found out later that he, you know, wanted to offer it to me, and, mm. and I was like, oh, that's so cool. Mm. Um, but yeah, it is cool. I mean, it's the biggest transgender cast. It's everybody who's transgender is transgender, and uh, it's very exciting. Mm. Everybody's very excited to be working on it, and it's about the ball culture in New York City in, in 1987, and uh, it sort of takes place during that time and shows the community and how much it uh, was discriminated against but also how much they sort of stuck together and helped each other and and lifted each other up out of that and to mm -hmm. sort of rise above it all and it's really moving and inspiring and uh, i'm very excited for people to see that well and so when you when the news breaks about like ryan murphy landing this like 300 million dollar deal with netflix mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you sort of like, do I text him, congrats, do I send <laughs> no. him flowers, how no, do I, I... No, I just, um, I just want to keep working with him. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know what that means for, you know, our, our FX shows or, mm -hmm. um, obviously they're still going to be at FX, yeah. but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I hope I, I, hope I can Stay keep in working. Business. Yeah, right? You know, yeah. move over to Netflix with yes, them. Yes, exactly. Netflix is, <laughs> is great. Um, maybe you already sort of answered this, but... Maybe there's a different answer. A fan from Facebook asked, what was the most difficult scene to shoot in American Horror Story Cult? Whew. Uh, so many. <laughs> Probably um, the most difficult for me was the killing of Winter because mm. it was just, uh, it was rough. I, you know, that, that season really took a toll on me. It, like, I lost touch with a lot of friends and family and it was, it was, it was really hard. And, uh, and you know, Kai in that moment is killing his family. Mm -hmm. And it was, it, it felt in a weird way, you know, the, 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 the dedication I was doing for this role is, was almost too extreme and uh -huh. that I had lost a lot of my life. And it, it was like, that parallel, parallel was, was yeah. pretty, uh, pretty intense. And uh, I didn't realize I was so sad, mm -hmm. but uh, um, yeah. Do you have any cool Quicksilver moments in the new X-Men, the Dark um, Phoenix movie? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I think, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, yeah, I hope everybody likes it. Mm -hmm. I, it's a, you know, Simon Kinberg directed it, which is, uh, which is new and very exciting and fresh, and he was great to work with. And it's a, it's a, um, it's a, it's a dark one, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it comes out in November, and it's really, um, it's beautifully acted. You know, Sophie's in, you know, a lot of it and it's uh it's just uh it's really dark and and, and dramatic and, and powerful so uh it'll be very cool and you're in american stories season eight we don't know what the theme is and you didn't know you were in it till people <laughs> were picking right. it up right <laughs> yeah i mean i knew i was like you know I mean, Ryan was like do you want to be in it he was yeah. like do you want to be in it i was like yeah of course <laughs> duh and then but that you know then they then i find out online that that I'm in it, and I'm like, all right, cool, great. You don't know what character? <laughs> no, I don't know anything. I don't even know what it's about. Do you know? Does that, no, I don't, but like, does that, how do you, does that give you pause? Like, I would, mm -hmm. it would be weird if I agreed to do a job, and then when they tell me, I think, I don't want to do that. It used, it used to. <laughs> yeah. But I'm so, uh, I'm so used to that now, that I kind of like, it's so exciting. You're like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, whatever it is, it's going to be thrown at me, and I'll just kind of hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's very exciting. Well, let us know when you know. I will. Although we probably will know first. Yeah. Um, okay, we're going to do a lightning round of questions to end things. Okay. Get in your zone. All right, I'm ready. I, what? Got that. Last show you binge watched? Uh, end of the effing world. Okay. Thank you for censoring yourself. Yes. If you could go back and be on any TV show ever, what would it be? Friends. A lot of people watch TV to unwind. What do you watch to unwind? Ooh, uh, I watch like movies that I've that I've 
that I've seen before, like uh, Forrest Gump or like Tommy Boy or like movies that I know the, the story yeah. and the ending to. Okay. Yeah. What do you know now that you wish you knew on your first acting job? Wait, say that again? What do you know now that you wish you knew on your first acting job? Oh my God. Relax. It's a good one. <laughs> we could all do that. Yes. Yeah. Chill out a little bit. <laughs> Chill. Yeah. Have you ever been fired from an acting job? No, knock on wood. Knock on wood. Uh, which Golden Girls character do you most identify mm -hmm. with? <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy, uh, Rose, Blanche, or Sophia? I was going to say who's the older one with the white hair, but they're all kind of like that. Uh, I think the taller one that's more brash with, okay. the, with the deeper voice. Dorothy. Dorothy, Dorothy yes. Yeah. Dorothy. <laughs> the perfect way to end this chat. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Evan, for taking the time to be here. Really appreciate thank you. it. Yeah. And to all you who were tuning in, thank you. And if you want to check out more of our Emmy chats, head over to latimes.com. Thanks.